Hello. So this is going to be the video for the Rove bracelet. Um, this is a new color palette. So make sure you are following. There's, I think, four color palettes currently. This will be number five. So make sure you are following your particular pattern with the right color info on there. Okay. These are your pieces for the closure on the bracelet. I put some washi tape on there, which won't leave anything sticky on your pieces so that it holds these little wire guards um, still for you. Okay. That way it should make it a bit easier when you're starting your piece. So you're going to open up the piece with the heart on there. And this is where we're going to start there. So you are starting at number one. You're picking up your four beads. And as you're going, white beads I have found with Toho in the past um, few years have been a little bit irregular, a little bit more irregular than um, some of the other colors. Don't know why that is, but uh, these are good enough. <laughs> we are starting with our four beads. We are going to loop around and go back through two of them, okay? Creating the beginning of what we're doing. And then we're going to go up through this little who's mo what's it. They're called wire guards. I get that question quite a bit. What's that called? It's called a wire guard. So we're going to go up through our little who's a what's it. And around. Uh-oh, I'm pulling my tail out. We're going to feed it through the little hole in here. Where am I on the screen? There we go. You're going to feed it through the hole in the finding just so that it sits in your wire guard properly and down through these other beads. I hope this is on the screen because I actually like can't see the camera from where I'm sitting, but uh, you know what? It's probably there. It's probably there. You have diagrams. <laughs> you can send me messages. Okay, so we've got it once around on there. Now we are going to go around again. So do that whole loop again. Pinch your little tail between your fingers so it doesn't get pulled through. We're going through this little loop and down through the wire guard. An option is to take this loop off and put it back on at the end. But uh, each time with soft metals like brass and silver, each time you mess around with it, it will get weaker. So you don't really want to have to open and close these things a whole lot. I am going to now do a hitch knot onto my thread bridge. So a hitch knot is just getting your little loop, going through it with your needle so that it just snugs on there. Okay, so give each your tail and that hitch knot a little pull. Da 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 da! Now I'm looking at my finding to see which side is the top. You'll see that one side the pieces are split and one side they're not. So this is my top side. And now we're going to start the bracelet. Gunt, that is a word. Gunt, going to start the bracelet. <laughs> we're going, we started the bracelet. Now we're starting the next step. So this is your pattern, okay? Follow your pattern that you have. You're picking up your size eight bead. You're weaving around through your starter piece here and back through the size eight bead so that it's sitting and pulling the right direction, okay? I'm just gonna flip this over because I like working with the thread towards me. So you are going to pick up the beads in the order stated on your directions. Now, gem duos, they have a top and a bottom. You will see that one side is flat. This side is quite flat and this side you can see has more of a bump. You can tell because this side has kind of a crease up the middle and this one just looks rather flat on it. So. If you want to take the time to make sure that you are going through right side up, up through the right side of the bead. 
so that it's laying correctly when you get your piece all done, that would be great. Then they're all facing the same way, right? Even though it's flipping around, I know I went through the right side of the bead, the correct side of the bead, let's call it. And I'm picking up my beads in the order that it says on my pattern. Okay, so I've picked up the next beads and now I'm going down through the other side of that gem duo. This is a mini gem duo size, by the way. Um, there are, there's one that's slightly bigger. It's a millimeter bigger each direction, but when you're actually looking at them, at them, that does make a, a difference in in uh, its size. Like a, they're not really interchangeable in patterns, FYI. If you've purchased the pattern and you're trying to do this yourself, mm -hmm. you would have to make some size adjustments for that um, information. Okay, so you've done your little loop around. You've gone back through your size 8 bead. Now I'm going to go just up through this side. I'm going back through my beads again. And out through my size 8 bead. Just to make sure. And now I'm pulling it very snug. Nice and snug. You want your tension on this piece to be snug. Snuggy snug, like a bug in a rug. So now we're on the next one. You basically repeat the same pattern over and over and over and over and over and over until you're done. How's that sound, folks? Fun, right? So you, you repeat this until you get to the other side. When you get to the other side, the width that you would like your bracelet, then we're going to do the next step. So just to go over this step a couple more times with you, after I've added this, the direct per the directions, which beads in which row, I go back down through my gem duo to create that little loopy loop. I'm going to cut this off just so it's not in view. So pulling that nice and snug. I just hit the camera with my forehead. So you guys might be in the wrong position. No, oh, you look okay. Um, this will twist around sometimes. Don't panic about it. Just make sure before you stick your needle back through, you're aware of which side is up. So pulling that snug. And then I'm going to be going back up my other side. Nice and snug and through my size eight bead, pull it nice and snug so that everybody sits happily. See that? We'll do it a couple more times together and then you're going to keep going on your own because I believe in you. Main thing is pick up the beads in the order that it says on your sheet because if you don't, you will find yourself with the wrong pattern happening. Do, 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 Watch, I'll look back and be like, yeah, that's totally the wrong pattern. It's not, I'm okay. So far so good. So I went back down through my gem duo. Right? Things are kind of flipping, but that's okay. I can flip them back. I'm picking up my next couple beads. So you can get this kit, again, there's now five colors of this kit in my shop, or you can just purchase the pattern if you want to buy the beads yourself and try your own color palette, you can do that. And um, the, the pattern has step-by-step -step instructions, there's three pages, diagrams on them to help you figure out exactly what's going on along with this little video. I do the videos to kind of help out with the pattern to give you a little bit more sense of what it should look like as you're going and what to do. So you will continue this foundation row of beads until you have the width that you would like. Now on the pattern pieces, there's instructions on how to fit the bracelet for yourself and how to figure out exactly how many of these you want in there. Okay. So I'm going to finish this side of it as though this is my length. Actually, I'll add one more. Um, 
just because this is a sample, this is not uh, me doing the whole kit caboodle right this moment. And I want to go through that side of my bead. Da -da -da -da. And then I go back down through my gem duo. You guys getting the hang of this? It's kind of fun, hey? The next step's fun too, because it adds that nice frilly edge. This could be a bracelet. This design could be the bracelet all on its own. Um, I actually did make a couple like that. And so we've got our little piece in there. And now I'm going to go back up through the side. Um, yeah, you could do the bracelet with just this basic kind of right angle weave foundation row, or you can include the next step as well for something a little different. All right, so on to that something different. So I am kind of fast forwarding to step. We are now at step eight. Okay, I've reached my desired length. So now I'm going to add a little, uh, make sure I'm on the screen. I'm going to add a little hitch knot here. We remember the hitch knot is to create a loop by going under our thread bridge and then tying it nice and snug. Give it a little wiggle back and forth so that things are sitting snugly. Okay. Snugly like a little bugly and a rugly. I am grabbing my four beads. I'm going to loop around through my... This is to add our other little um, finding piece, okay? So I've gone around through there. Now I'm going to grab my other finding. It is not a huge deal if you get these the wrong side or right side, but you want to make sure that you are holding that in there because Threading it back through will be kind of annoying after the fact. So I'm just going to lay him down there. You want to be looking at the bottom, the open side of this, and the top side of your gem duos. Okay? So this is open. I'm looking at the inside of it and at the top side of my gem duos at the same time. So I go up through these two because I'm going to put my little wire guard on this side going around through my wire guard down through the other side of my wire guard and through those beads so just through the other two that are going to be next to my finding oh that's awesome okay so you want to make sure that thread is actually in the wire guard. And we can see my thread is not in the wire guard. It's behind the wire guard because it's behind this piece. So I am going to lift it around and I'm going to, if yours has done this, just so you know, you can kind of tuck it in that little loop so that it is now sitting and riding in your wire guard. The wire guard is basically a little tunnel or a little bridge that um, the thread rides on. In theory, it protects the wire when you're using wire. So we're going around our thread guard one more time, wire guard. I've looped after the size 8 bead, okay? I'm pulling these beads close together when I'm doing this. So looping around again, and I'm going through these little beads, beadsies again. Everybody's where they need to be. I'm going back through here and I am going to do another little hitch, okay, to keep all that stuff nice and snug. Okay, so we have added each little finding on our bracelet. Your bracelet should be quite a bit longer than this. <laughs> it can be an anklet, it can be a bracelet, whatever length works for you, but it should be longer than this. Okay, we are now on step 11, okay? So we go through these two beads, our two 
beads previous to the gem duo. We're now going to add a little frilly thing above our gem duo. So we go through these next two beads. And it adds a little edge like that. Coolio, hey? So now we're doing a little different edge on the next one. Uh, I just guessed on what that was. That was right. Okay, good. Follow your pattern, people. Follow your pattern. So each little frill we're adding, each little pico edge or picket edge, we're going between the beads and over the feature bead. So over this gem duo bead, over the size 8 bead, over the gem duo bead, over the size 8 bead. So we're... I added my little flourish. I'm going back through these beads on the other side and coming out just above the gem duo. So each time you're kind of going, you're skipping from the size 8 bead to the gem duo bead, size 8 bead to the gem duo bead kind of thing. Pull it nice and snug. Arrange your beads where you want them to go. Don't forget, just like the other videos, you are in charge. Okay, so you're going to pull them a little bit snug and tell them where you would like them to go. Right now, my beads, there we go. They were wanting to just do their own thing, which that's not how this pattern was written. So now we're picking up the beads that go over the gem duo. And we're putting them in place. And then the beads that go over top of the size 8 bead. Do you know what I just realized? I did that wrong. <laughs> See guys, no one told me. You all just watched me do that wrong. You just watched me do it wrong. That's okay. So, just like I was telling you, follow your pattern. I should have been following my pattern. All the videos, all of the videos have some kind of issue in them. But you know what? That's real life. That's beading. So the mistake I made is these little demi beads, these size 8 demi beads, should stay around your size 8 round bead. You are just going through the size 11 seed beads that are on either side of the gem duos, okay? You're skipping all size eight beads, the demi beads and the round beads. So everything was getting kind of squished in there and I didn't have enough room. That's why. So I'm skipping size eight demi, size eight round, and size eight demi, and I'm going through this the size 11 bead that's right next to my gem duo hole, okay? That fits so much better. <laughs> you can tell it's been a minute since I made this bracelet. So I'm picking up the ones that go above my gem duo and just through the size 11 bead. Make sure I'm kind of telling them where they need to go. Picking up the ones that go over the size 8 and just again through that size 11 bead. So that everybody is sitting correctly. That looks so much better. Are you guys enjoying yourselves yet? <laughs> we got past the mistake, which is the thing that matters. And sometimes mistakes really can be annoying and sometimes they're just an oops and that's fine and we move on. So following the pattern, going through just the size 11 bead, picking up the beads that the pattern says, you keep going the length of your bracelet until you get to the other end. So you're just gonna keep going, keep going on my little sample that is not that far. Just the fun part about samples. Okay, so I'm at my other end. Once you get to your other end, you wanna make sure all your beads are sitting correctly. It's not super tight tension on this one, it's snug tension on these sides, okay? So you've repeated your steps 11 and 12 until you got to the end. Now, when we get to this end, we're just looping around the end. So I had gone through my size 11 beads, so now I'm going through the other beads so that I come out of that size 11 bead again. And I'm doing the same thing up the other side. I'm adding my beautiful flourish. Do -do -do -do. Through the size 11 bead. Make sure you're in charge. You tell those beads where to go. Just like I say in the other videos. 
I can teach you all the different stitches and all the different techniques and you can really enjoy yourself if you remember you are in charge of the beads and sometimes that means picking certain beads you want and certain beads you don't want and sometimes that means telling the beads exactly where you need them to be because they may not know to be there until we've put all the little stitches where they need to go, right? Right. Did you guys follow along on that? Because sometimes I feel like I just yatter on and no, I know it's not important and I know it's not relevant, but there's some little gems in there and it's like we're just hanging out and we're beating. It's just really hard for you guys to ask questions while we're doing this, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, so you get the idea, you're following your pattern, it's alternating. It's really this whole bracelet is only a few steps. It's a few steps and just repeating it again and again so that you end up with a wicked awesome bracelet. Or if you're making it into a longer length anklet, then you do that. So you keep going until you get to your end. And then when you're done, you're going to go through to the other side of the size 8 bead. Guess what we're going to do? That's right. The hitch. So your final hitch, I would do through your these beads here. I would do it around that thread bridge. You can, if it's snug, that one's kind of snug, so I don't think I'm going to do it there. I'm going to do my little hitch on this side here. Never force uh, your needle through if it feels really tight, because you would hate to get to the end and break your bead. Because guess what? That means you're doing it all again. So, toodaloo! Fun, right? So this is the Rove bracelet. Normally I cut that off and I give it a little burn just super carefully. Like that. Tuck that in there. And then you have your adorable little bracelet. I don't know who this is going to fit. Um, maybe one of my dolls. Can be a funky ring with a bracelet back. I mean, I guess. Okay, so that is the Rove bracelet kit with its cute little heart accessory. This is the new color that will be going up Saturday morning. This is currently Friday night. I hope you guys love it. And I guess there's not really much else to say, right? You just made a rad bra bracelet. Have fun. See you on the next one.